Hello everyone and welcome to the very first Transformers review of the Transformers 1 Prime Changers B127 and Sentinel Prime. Okay, so let's take a look at the boxes first. Here is the box of Sentinel. You can see here the Transformers 1 logo, here Sentinel Prime. You can see that the alt mode is a repainted in slightly modified Tetrajet of a Seeker, which resembles the one of Starscream. Here you have a lovely image of Sentinel Prime in the robot mode. You can see his face and his alt mode right here. At the back of the box you have some product image. You have the robot mode, the alt mode, the logo and 16 steps. So not a lot of steps for this guy. And here you have a beautiful poster which I really love with B127, Elita, D16 and Orion Pax of course. Orion packs that is, I think, coming later this month with Alpha Tryon, so I'll be reviewing these two. And for B127, aka Bumblebee, you have the same uh, arrangements. Here you have another image of B127, which looks a little bit more gold than yellow, but still a design I really like. And here you have some images which we've already seen uh, the last month. And let's start with B127. So here he is, based on his upgraded TCOG look we, that we can see in the trailer. So this is not the pre-TCOG version that has, you know, black black uh, things on the legs and black blocky shoulders. These are more rounded to match the wheels he has. The, all, the face, as you can see right here, is very cool and very detailed. I love the way it is. It's a mix of... Maybe Cyberverse and definitely Bumblebee movie and Bayverse with the helmet. The face is more Cyberverse-like and you can see he has a small chin here. And which is actually interesting because the pre t version doesn't have this chin piece. So I think it was pretty interesting to point this out. Um, also one thing, the side pieces right here are maybe compared to the CG model. They are maybe a bit too low but it's not really a deal breaker. It's just something that's there and it doesn't ruin the overall figure. Um, something that I question and that I don't really understand why is that he has a G1 Autobot insignia here, but if I recall correctly, in this movie there is no faction yet. So I don't know why they added this logo. Perhaps maybe at the end of the movie, yes, because we'll see uh, full-blown Optimus Prime and Megatron fighting each other, I guess, because they teased it. Um, but maybe they will create the Autobot faction. We can see the Decepticon logo in the trailer, made out of lava. But uh, yes, just one thing I wanted to point out. He has the famous knife hands! I have knife hands! Yeah, so this really cool. So, something that bugs me off a little is that it, it can only plug here on this uh, right arm. Let me focus. Yes, it, can, it has pegs, but it can only plug here. And in order to plug it to the other arm, you have to put the arm cannon on because you can see there are the tabs here and the slots, but... If you move the cannon away, there is no slots, and you can't put, yes, see, there is no slots. You can't put the weapon here, and it's it's a shame, really. Maybe the Studio Series version will fix that, but... So, here is the cannon. It's very Bayverse inspired, and yeah, it looks pretty cool. So, you have this piece, these forearm pieces added here in order to put the knife hand on. So, yeah. It just tabs into place, like that, and there he has the cannon. The torso is very well detailed, of course, so are the, the shoulders. And something actually cool is, is that you can move the torso piece. There it is, it's a very tight connection, so please be careful. And you can see here his pre t -cog chest with the t -cog, which is referred to as an energy sphere, I don't know why. but. Um, Okay, so, so far I've seen it's not removable, so either it isn't removable or I don't have enough strength to pull it out. And if that's the case, then I'm sorry. But yeah, it's a very cool look. If you want a... This is probably the closest thing we'll get to a pre Cog Bumblebee for now. And you can put it right back on and he looks now like B127 in the trailer. Now, articulation-wise, he has a tight ball joint in the head. It's not super tight, but... It can hold into place, it's definitely not loose, which is a good thing. He can look up, he can look... He can't look down, really. He can look side to side, of course. A little bit down, maybe, and a little bit up. 
Shoulders are on ball joints, so they have a great... Oops, no, don't do that. They have a great range of motion. I think it's pretty cool. Arms are on... Ball joints too! Wow! Ah, I didn't see that. Okay, they're on ball joints. Maybe, okay, that's cool. Can rotate, can bend 90 degree, maybe a little bit more. He has a waist swivel. Thank you, I like that. There are some figures nowadays that don't have waist swivel. No wrist rotation, but... Okay, honestly, I don't mind because in my country, at least, these are a lot cheaper than Legacy or Studio Series Deluxes, so I don't mind. Fires are on the ball joint, they can go, they can kick, they can go far, they can spread also. Uh, rotation here at the thighs, knee bend, mm, yeah, maybe about 90 degrees, like, and foot tilting upwards. And something that really is disappointing is that... They have a mushroom, the foot is on a mushroom peg, but it can't really pivot side to side, which is a shame. Unless you put it up, maybe you have a little range of motion, but what's the point of, of having it there? So, overall, articulation, definitely not bad, but not the greatest. It's still, I love this figure, it's still pretty cool. Uh, something that also bugs people is the very hollow, hollow legs. If you want here, you can maybe detach it and... Uh, Try to take a little bit more dynamic poses. I can't do it right now because I am not really well positioned for it. But yeah, at least you can try, but I don't think it looks the greatest, unfortunately. For some size comparisons, um, let's see. Oh, here he is with my favorite Bumblebee ever. Studio Series GB, so as you can see, it's a prime treasure, but a lot bigger than uh, some Studio Series Deluxes. Here he is with the last B127 we got in the line. Cybertronian B, from the Bombi movie, of course. Um, again, a lot taller because it's not the same design, not the same universe, so the scale here doesn't really matter. Here he is with Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. And I think they scale really well together. I'm hoping I'll soon get the Studio Series TF1 Optimus because I hope I, I want it. I think it will look great uh, with Bumblebee. And here he is with my latest figure, that is the Studio Series Gamma Edition Sideswipe, so maybe about the same size, and this is a pretty big deluxe, so I guess you... At least in my country, these Prime Changers are a lot cheaper than this thing, so I, I think you get really a run for your money, because they're great. And last but not least, here he is with... Reactivate Bumblebee. They use... Kind of like the same golden plastic they have. And now let's move on to a Sentinel Prime. And let me tell you, I have a lot of things to say about this. This is such a great design and a great retake on the character, at least physically. I love what they did here with the, a lot of mix from different Sentinel Prime designs. You can see here the, the, the cape, almost wing-like piece on his back that resembles a lot of the Dark of the Moon cape. And of course we have the, the head. Amazing, beautiful hat. I love the way they made it. With the horn sticking uh, back, which reminded me a lot of um, Zeta Prime from the games. And the overall color of him really is really reminding us of an uh, animated Sentinel. He also comes with a lot, a shit ton of accessories. You can see two blasters on his wings. He also got shoulder cannons, literally shoulder cannons. And an amazing shield, but they refer it as a saw. But I think it looks more like a shield, and I like it like a shield, you know. I think it's a nice uh, reference to animated Sentinel Prime with his blue shield. So instead it's pink here, like Energon, so yeah, full-on Energon shield. As you can see, beautiful details on the body. Um, and almost, almost no hollow spaces. You can see there are some in the arms, but they're barely here. Um, maybe in the back that there is in the legs, but they try to fill it with these uh, wing pieces. And so the size, not that much, and maybe, yes, okay, the wings have some, and maybe here in the shoulders, the biceps more. But it doesn't ruin this figure for me, it's very solid, and uh, I can't wait to see the character in Studio Series, because I think there's a Voyager of him that is coming. So, as I said for the accessories, he comes with two small 
blaster pistols, which can plug onto the hands and the wings. I think they are more intended for the wings. He comes with shoulder cannons, which can also plug in the wings. And this shield, its name, is it's referred to as a boss saw, but I think it's, it looks more like a shield, and I prefer to call it a shield. Even without the accessories on him, he still looks very cool, and I love... I, once again, I'm repeating myself, but I love what they did with him. And he looks very accurate to the brief moments we saw him in the trailer. So yeah, if they did something this amazing at such a small scale, I don't think they can mess up the Studio Series version. But who knows? Wait and see. So for articulations, he has a ball joint in the head, so he can look up, down, side to side. The arms are on mushroom pegs, so they can rotate. If you move the wing away, they can rotate for 360. Here you have articulation in the biceps. Bicep swivel. No wrist rotation, but again, cheaper than regular deluxes, so I don't mind. A waist swivel, uncompromised. Looks very nice. Very useful too. Ball joint in the legs. Can kick very far. Spread, of course. And knees that can bend. Okay, 80 degrees. Reasonable. It's okay. And actual ankle pivots. And that's that's really cool. Unlike Bumblebee, which they are useless, this one can actually use them. And I'm sure some high photographer like that toy guy, Mgo, Primus Prime will certainly make good pictures with this figure. Okay, now for comparisons. Well, here he is with his Wavemate B127. So... A little smaller, so definitely not in scale, but still they look cool together. Here he is once again with BB Movie Prime, so a lot taller than him. Here he is with Studio Series Sentinel, so different designs, but good takes for both of them. They have a different approach, and I think they are achieving it pretty well. Here he is with... Nova Prime, I'm sure you can guess there's a reason I chose Nova Prime for a comparison, right? You know, Sentinel, Nova Prime, racist robots. And here he is with his assistant, his kind of assistant since I don't have an arachnid figure. This is Black Arachnia, so yeah, I'm guessing these two will be the main baddies of the movie. If you don't count the quintessence. So now we can start Bumblebee's transformation. You can first start by putting the legs here and tabbing all of this together. Then you want to dislocate this, this bit and fold the head inside. It can be a bit tight, be careful. Okay, there is nothing broke, don't worry. Maybe turn the head. Yeah, like this, turn the head and you can also Unfold this bit right here. Take the whole chest piece and move it upwards. There are small tabs here that you can see and slots. You're gonna want to connect all this together so it's nice into place. The arms are on double hinges, so be careful to move them properly so we can put it inside. The same here. So now we can start working on the legs because I realized I made a mistake. You need to rotate the whole waist, like that. Once you are done with these pieces, you can bring in the shoulders together and tab them. And the hands will actually want to connect, like that. And all we have to do is make use of the hinges right here on the legs. So unfold them because I made a mistake at the beginning. And bring them right here. It's very easy. And here you have Bumblebee in his vehicle mode, which is very Bumblebee movie inspired. Um, so I think overall it's a nice looking Cybertronian car. My only complaints will be the hollow bit here, but eh, it is what it is, like Ingo would say. So yeah, it's a really nice looking car, and with a, you can see the arms, but I think the undercarriage is pretty nicely done and handled. Here they are, the, you have the hollow feet, hollow heels, but I think it looks acceptable. No, definitely not studio series worthy, because we're definitely getting a studio series of this. Uh, but I think for a mainline figure that is, once again, in my country at least, cheaper than regular deluxes, I think it's pretty amazing. 
And yes, you also have some weapon storage. Armored Bumblebee. I love it. I love it. Okay, now for Sentinel, so make sure you have the blasters on. Can we add the other ones? No, not yet, okay, because I'm doing this while I'm also following the instructions, so pardon me. You need to take these cockpit nose bit here and fold them out. They kind of look like weapons. I dig it. Then you'll just lift the arms and rotate them like this. Unfold the wing, the wings here, the wing bits. So now he has giant sentinel wings, like a seeker. Next, you need to unfold the backpack. And then take this whole piece and fold it inside so that you will hide sentinel's head. Where's my head? And now what you can do is you can finally lift the shoulder pieces very tight, very tight on my copy, and plug them, oh, maybe rotate the forearms, right, like that, and clips everything together, and now you have the, oops, now you have the front of the jet fully done. So next, just take the backpack and put it back on. So now it's hiding Sentinel's head. Unfold the pieces here for the back wings. They're called like that, right? Back wings. I'm, I'm saying something stupid, and I? So then hold the feet and put them inside. They are very tight. Oh, that's not good to manipulate. There we go. I'm guessing you should fold them next. Yep, yeah, looks like you should, right, fold them. Like so, be careful. Put them properly, not like me, like that. And then you can fold them and connect the bits together. Make sure to connect the foot slot into the tab in the chest right here. And you should be good to go. Now what you have to do, you have a tab here and a slot. You just need to connect, focus, like that. You just need to connect the wings in and boom. There we go. Energon Megatron looking jet. I added the last weapons and the shield here. And yeah, it's an amazing looking jet. Maybe not very aerodynamic because of the whole undercarriage, but since it's an alien vessel, I don't think we should complain too much. And it's, you know... It hides the robots very well, maybe the hands are visible here, but overall, I think they did a really good job with both this and Bumblebee. Um, I think it's a really nice art mode for a Sentinel. Very high esteem looking and pristine and almost royal. Almost as if he was the king of Cybertron. Oops, maybe need to tap this right. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. So there we have it, small video review of uh, the first two Prime Changers to be released to the public. These were purchased on Amazon, they are not stolen and they are not early samples. So I hope you enjoyed this little review of mine. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment and let me know what you think of these toys. Ciao, ciao, ciao!